troubles vanish. Hearts are mended in the presence of the king. In his presence, his holy presence. <laughs> the weary shall find perfect rest. The broken heart restored. Where? In his presence. In his holy presence. I've been saved 50 some years, but there's nothing like the presence. Ayabasha. Uh Ayabosha. -huh. Uh -huh. Glory to your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. The Lord is in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jacob got to a place. He said, the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. I didn't know he was like this here. He never gets old. He never gets hackneyed. He's always fresh. He's always on time. He's always relevant. He is who he is. Do you know who I'm talking about? I wish I had a believe in church today. I'm glad. I'm thankful for the honor of being in his presence. Hallelujah. Just let me be myself. I, I, I can't be anybody but me. It's a good thing I can't sing because I'd be bad then, boy. Yeah. I, I am from, I, I need to introduce myself, I, I am from the tribe of Judah. I said, I am from the tribe of Judah. I am a son of Issachar, but I'm from the tribe of Judah. I learned how to walk with God in the hymnals of the church. Yeah, I know 3,000 hymns. I, I didn't say the chorus. I said, I know 3,000 hymns. I can sing the first, second, and third stanza. But let me confess, that's because I was a nerd all my life, and so I'd be bored in our four-hour services, and so I'd read the songbooks. I didn't know God was preparing me for ministry. He's a right now God. I say he's a right now God. His knowledge is legendary. Look, 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 look. Let me talk to you about the will of God. The will of God for you. I already know God's will for you. I remember as a young teenager asking my pastor, begging him, can you pray for me? I, I, I want to know God's will. He said, son, have I, not, have I not taught you? You don't need to know God's will to do God's will. I said, really? How could that be possible? He said, you ever read Romans 12? I beg you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, Will you present your whole self to God? Will you do it as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God? It's only your reasonable service. And will you be not conformed or shaped by this world, but allow the Holy Spirit to transform you by the renewing of your mind? He said, because if you do that, you will phaneros, prove, demonstrate, manifest. You won't have to think about God's will you, because you're already surrendered. Well, you don't need to know particulars when you know the whole story. When you're ready to do God's will, you're not looking for a way out. You have to be, oh God, please show me your will. He, look, his will must become your life. Uh huh. I'm going to get there in a moment. But you've got to understand, God does not need your understanding. He needs your obedience. I'm going to say this. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we're here today. And we've already been overwhelmed by the story. I sat there knowing the particulars of cardiac ICU. You don't understand this, but less than 5% of people who have a heart rate of 20 ever open their eyes again. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, no. That, it's not my opinion. This, this is true. Less than 5% of people with a heart rate of 20 leave that room. Minutes and seconds count. But God. Oh, I've seen him do it. I, this is not a test of lie. I, I've seen him. I've seen him do it. I've seen God reverse what we know that physiologically is not possible. I've seen God heal people with a cancer at a certain stage that we know is over. But I shouldn't be here right now, but <laughs> hallelujah. Brush the haters off. Tell them God is with me. I will not fear what the enemy threatens me with. I, uh, never like me he's for me get over it I feel like praying well I'm glad to be here they told me there's books out there about blood let me look look what a couple weeks ago we talked about something called Calvary yes, sir. yeah and we 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 heard this voice from a tree And then they pierced him in his side. And the blood came out. We didn't realize that he was preparing you and I to be the blood. In many ways, well, let me ask you, how many of y'all say, you're the blood? No, it's his blood. You're the blood. Of the countless number of organs in your body and the ten major systems, only one organ is mobile. Mm. You, some of y'all gonna get on this side. Some of y'all got it. Yeah, y your liver is fantastic, but it does not move. Your brain is almost in, infinite in its wisdom but it stays right there. Your heart is critical. It pumps, but it doesn't move. Only the blood. Of the three trillion cells in your body, not one can live for two minutes if it does not get blood. If the blood does not touch that cell, it's out of here. It becomes toxic and it will die because blood is life. And when he died on Calvary and when he rose again and he offered the blood in the Holy of Holies, he sent back you and I to become the mobile part of the body of Christ. Many of you don't even know that you're white blood cells. Some of you are neutrophils. Some are basophils. Some of you are lymphocytes. You've got precise, definite gifts and abilities that you have not even tapped into, not knowing that God called you to be that because somebody needs the infection removed. Somebody needs the toxins killed. Somebody needs that blood, that's white blood cell, to get the devil out of your life. And you sitting in church not knowing who you are. Some of you are platelets, indistinct, microscopic, very small, don't look like nothing. But what you don't know is those platelets keep you from bleeding every day. That little small cut, that's why you didn't bleed because they rush to the, the platelets are the, are, are, the, are the first responders. But, but, hmm. But they pay for it. Look, look, you cannot be a platelet without dying. Oh, no. No, you cannot be a functional platelet without, you can, you can look cute all you want to, but when the cut is there, you must rush to the site and give your body to stop the bleeding. You don't even know it. You are a platelet. You're trying to be a preacher. You ain't a preacher. You're a platelet. Maybe you're a red blood cell. Some of y'all had breakfast this morning. Uh-huh. 
and you sitting here in church and not dying because that breakfast was the nutrient for your body and whether it was carbohydrates or proteins or glucose, whatever it was, it had to be broken down in your body and your cells could not get the benefit until the red blood cells came and took it by the serum and took it to every part. You don't even know who you are. You don't even know who you are. You are the blood. Because when I see the blood. Now I didn't get into the word. You, you told me how much time I had. When I see the blood. I, I'm not trying to promote the book. But I'm going to tell you this and I hope it's not arrogance. It is the best book on the market about the blood of Jesus and the blood that's human. It is the best. It, it will tell you facts. It will tell you how you must operate before he comes. You're not here to be stationary or stagnant. You must get mobile. Give the Lord praise. I'm going to go on. I, I'm halfway done. Okay, okay, sorry. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Let me read to you a couple of scriptures. I, I certainly want to be right, give honor to God and the Holy Spirit and all the people and all the bishops and the people I don't know to my church. I know that some of y'all are in church and you've got me on your stream. You should be listening to the preacher. The preacher's there to preach to you, not me. I'm talking to my people right now. In Jesus' name, just focus on the preacher that's at 38th Street and not the one that's in Columbus now. Uh -huh. Stand with me, please. Amen. We've done this, but when you're the, the sister Clyde, wh wh where are you sitting? Wh yeah, wave your hands so I can see you. Give the Lord praise for her. No. I, I, I said praise. That means appreciate. Appreciate the gift. Appreciate the gift again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Because see, first ladies don't have really a title, and we don't halfway pay them, and we don't really know that the man can't do too much without her. Now, you, you saw it when she, she was open and transparent about what she was going through when she was in the hospital, but you only heard one story. We've got 41 years of story, 46 years of stories. Give the Lord praise again for her. <clears throat> I, I don't say it to be popular. I've been married to Susan Davenport Smith this September, 47 years. Now, she warns me, don't you go there telling them you've been married 47 years because you have not made September yet. Y'all don't, you, he knows that. She'll tell me in a minute, you know, yeah, you've been married 46 years and so many months. Because she, she'll tell you that I told her when I proposed to her that if I marry you, that's it. I told her, no matter what you say or do, I will guarantee you, I will never leave you. I know I'm crazy, okay, like a fox. And she says, every year you tell me that, and I appreciate it, but I didn't make that commitment. Right now, she's, she, she's looking at me and saying, boy, you get, I'm going to get you when you get home, too. But that's what I love about her. She is uniquely intended for me. She is the cream in my coffee. She's the sugar in my cake. My, my three daughters said, y'all make us sick because you can be fussing and mad. And she walks into the room, you change. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Celebrate Sister Susan Davenport Smith. And we just celebrated a few weeks ago 43 years of pastoring, and God's been good to us, and I won't take any more time. What, what, what a joy, what a blessing we, we have inherited in the Lord Jesus Christ. Of all the pain and the fears you've had, God has been with you and will be with you. Uh oh. I almost sang a song, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace, 
to trust him more. Hmm. Hmm. We have a good church. I, I know this atmosphere. I know it. I'm familiar with it. I want to read the word of the Lord. Let me just confess. I didn't want to read this particular scripture because it's so common. But I understand that God knows better than Horace. So I'm going to give you two passages very quickly. The first one is very familiar in Jeremiah chapter 3. You know the verse already. It simply says, and I will give you pastors. This is the God of creation saying this. I will give you pastors. I will give you pastors after my own heart. And they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. I want to talk about a little bit about the context of that. Why is that so powerful? Because all pastors are not pastors. See, you spoil. All leaders don't lead. They got the title but don't have the anointing. But I will give you, if, if God loves you, he will give you pastors after his own heart. And those men and women will feed you with something that is indispensable for life. Knowledge and understanding. The New Testament corollary is Ephesians chapter 1. And I want to read quite a few verses, but I won't. I'll drop right down to Paul's prayer in the first chapter of Ephesians. And Paul simply says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of, say this word with me, glory. glory. Now, you, now you have to say that differently. Say that as you anticipate the brilliance of God that's going to be revealed in your life and say glory. If I was at the end of my sermon, I'd tell you, turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see glory in your future. See, you didn't believe that. That's not a faith saying. Come on. If you got faith about that person and you understand the will of God being unveiled in them, you say, neighbor, I don't care what you're going through. I see glory in your future. You can say it with confidence, <laughs> with confidence, babe. Oh, 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 he dying. I see glory in your future. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Father of glory, here's his prayer, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The key verse for me, as a physician, and I've looked at it many times, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. <sighs> he said, when you get this, you will know the hope of his calling. You'll know not, you'll know the, the, the wealth of the glory of God, his inheritance in you you will experience the power of his resurrection. When you receive the blessing of godly illumination and when you get the knowledge of God, demons won't like you at all. When you walk in the room, you will shut them down. Because <sighs> you cannot be intimidated and you will not fold under pressure. Because you know in whom you have believed and you are persuaded. You've got something that has not even happened yet, but you know it's going to happen because God is not a man and he cannot lie. I pray for you. I don't pray for a Mercedes. I didn't pray for a new husband or wife. I did not pray for a better boyfriend. I did not pray that for you. I pray that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened. <laughs> Give God praise for that. Father, bless us today for a few moments. I pray that the assignment you gave to Bishop Timothy, 
Sister Clyde, we come so apparent today in this place for those who are online, those who are searching for something in the chaos of their life that they will gain hope because of what you have decided to do in a human vessel. We give you glory, honor, and praise, and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Pray for me. I am a doctor, but I'm also a Pentecostal preacher. And I see the clock. I told your pastor as he talked about the time that we were so blessed to share on yesterday, I wanted to open up the word of the Lord with something that captured my heart some time ago. We're sitting here in this wonderful church. All of us have become survivors of something so cataclysmic that we don't even appreciate what we've been through. I tell my pastors, I was not in your church in January, February of 2020, but I know what you preached because we all preach the same thing. We said it's a new year, it's, it's the year 2020, and you know us preachers. If it's 2020, then that means perfect vision. We all knew that this is a year of perfect vision, not knowing we were all liars, because not even the prophets in the church saw what was coming. God does not always give to you full knowledge. In fact, your faith cannot be based on full knowledge. You've got to trust God to walk with him. If you've got all the knowledge, Paul says, why do you yet hope for it? Faith is not complete understanding. Faith is always a dynamic that demands trust. So I preached it too. It's 2020. And then all hell broke loose. So I want to read to you something that happened in October of 2020 in the field of medicine. All of us who are in medicine know that you are required to keep up with the latest. I've been a physician since 1975. I train doctors. I'm a professor at the University of Northwestern, and yet I am required every two years to have at least 100 hours of what's called CME, continuous medical education, or they will take my license from me. You can't fake it in our profession. You could be the esteemed Dr. Horace Smith who developed the sickle cell thalassemia program at Northwestern for 25 years, but if you don't keep up with your education, they will snatch your license. And so we have to read certain journals. Some of you are familiar with something called the New England Journal of Medicine. It is one of the most prestigious journals in the plan, on the planet. It's at least number two or number three. This journal has been writing editorial since the year of 1812. It always writes about the greatest scientific advances or therapies that we have encountered in the previous year. But the editorial in October of 2020 did not write about a medical advance at all. But it wrote about something I want to share with you very briefly but very importantly. And here's the title of the editorial that was signed by all of those on the editorial board of the journal. It is unusual even in articles of great importance that every editor on the, on the, on the department will agree with it so they won't put their name on it. But on this one, it was unanimous. It was across every political spectrum. It was across every demographic. They all signed on to this editorial, and it was entitled Dying in a Leadership Vacuum. Why would a scientific journal talk about leadership? Let me read the abstract to you. 
It says, in an unprecedented move, the New England Journal of Medicine on Wednesday published an editorial by its editors condemning the present administration for its response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it quotes this, we rarely publish editorials signed by all the editors, said Dr. Eric Rubin, editor-in-chief, but this one everyone signed on. At that time, he wrote, the United States leads the world in COVID-19 cases and deaths. So far at that time, more than 7.5 million people in this country have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and more than 200,000 people have died of the disease. And they close by saying this crisis has produced a test of leadership. With no good options to combat a novel pathogen, countries were forced to make hard choices about how to respond. Here in our country, which is the richest country in the world, with resources coming out of our noses, our leaders have failed that test. They have managed to have taken a crisis and turned it into a tragedy. Hmm. The U.S. came into this pandemic with enormous advantages, tremendous manufacturing capacity, biochemical and biomedical research systems par none, the envy of the world. We have enormous expertise in public health and health policy and basic biology. We have consistently been able to turn that expertise into new therapies and preventive measures. But much of that expertise was ignored. And our leaders have chosen to ignore and denigrate the experts. As of March 2023, over 1.1 million Americans have died from COVID-19. According to reliable scientific sources, at least one third of these people should not have died. 450,000 died in the first year. I sat on one committee when COVID first came out in the first quarter, and I sat down with epidemiologists and virologists, and we talked about what was coming. We knew the reports from China. We understood it was a novel virus, and we knew what we had to do because we had dealt with viruses before. We had dealt with, again, this coronavirus before, but not this type. And we, we said that at the worst, 40,000 Americans should die in the first year. And when the first year was over, Almost a half million Americans died. Why did they die? They didn't die because we didn't know what to do. They did not die because we did not have the resources to combat this thing, at least until we developed a virus, which many of you said they did it too quickly. Are you out of your mind? 7,000 people dying every day, and you said that they developed help too soon? What is wrong with you? We knew we had to do something or people would die on a greater scale. And yet our leaders politicized what was happening and allowed people to die. When this happened and we prayed about it, the Lord said to me, you need to go back to one of your favorite Old Testament scriptures in Isaiah. Let me read it to you in the 59th chapter of Isaiah and verse 13 it says, in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood and judgment is turned away back. And justice stands afar off. Why, colon, because truth got shot in the street. The Bible says truth is falling in the street. I said truth got shot in the street and equity could not enter. Because the devil uses falsehood and, a pre and, and intimidation to keep you from what God wants for you. He uses fear and anxiety to keep you from walking in the fullness of what God has already made a way because you listen to a liar. Verse 15 says, yeah, truth faileth. And he or she that departs from evil make themselves a prey. And the Lord saw it. 
And it displeased him that there was no justice. Then IV says, so justice is driven back. Righteousness stands at a distance. Truth stumbled in the streets. Honesty was afraid to enter. Truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. And the Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. You have to appreciate what God wants to happen in your life. You must not get caught up on the traditional apostolic Pentecostal theory that once you get saved, that's it. No, it isn't. When you get saved, the Bible tells you, you are simply born again. I'm going to say that again. I know you're a deacon. I know you're you a trustee and you're a church mother, but you really just got born again. And if you don't get something else added to your life since you've been born again, you will fall prey to the same lie as folk that don't. Can I preach for a little while? I have three daughters. I was there at each one of their deliveries. I was in the room with my colleagues when they were born, and I will tell you that the day they were born, they will never, if they live 100 years, have more life than they had on the first moment they came out of the uterus. But I did not leave my daughters there to themselves because they had life. I re Oh, God. I realized I had an obligation to do something for them to ensure the quality and growth of their life or I would be a disenfranchised father. Listen to me, church. You cannot say because you've been born again that it's over. No, it's not. The devil is real. The Bible says that there is a way unto man that seemeth right. You think you know, but you don't know. In fact, I love what he said. If you don't acknowledge the fact that as long as you've been saved, you still don't know, you're going to mess up. You're going to, you, oh, Jesus, I can't say that in this church. Okay, all right, hallelujah. you got to be careful about your knowledge that you think you have because God will never give you what you need to have to you. Can I preach a little while? God has decided to use human vessels to get his work done and in the church is even magnified I don't care what gift you have you are not going to be progressive in the Lord without a covering called a pastor you need a leader that is ordained of God to direct We got it wrong. I got the Holy Ghost. I speak in tongues. I, we all speak in tongues. We got the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says if God loves you, he will give you pastors after his own heart. Now watch this. They will feed you. They will guide you with wisdom and understanding. I need a little help here. Hallelujah. I was thinking about this in the pandemic because y'all know what happened. When the pandemic hit, some of us church folks said the same thing. It's a conspiracy. It's not really a virus. No, in fact, it's the devil and the Lord will protect me. Baby, when God gives you access to knowledge and you ignore it, you're on your own, baby. You can speak in tongues, run around the church all you want to. You ain't going to make God do for you what he told you not to do and you won't listen. Can I preach a little while? We, we, mm -hmm. we have fallen prey to what I call source equivalency. Oh, I like, those, I like those platforms. But the internet has taught us that everybody's an expert. In my church, I get into trouble because I'm the pastor and I tell them. My staff says to me, now, Bishop, we must respect everyone's opinion. Can I tell you something I don't tell everybody? I do not respect everyone's opinion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I told the bishop at the hospital, we've got professors, we've got associate professors, we've got assistant professors, we've got senior uh, attendings, we've got junior attendings, we've got fellows, we've got third year residents, second year residents, first year residents, and interns. Watch this. And we always attract the finest minds in the country to apply for our residency. We know they are academically qualified, but 
we watch what they do. And if they don't listen to the guys ahead of them, we get rid of them. Because you are dangerous. You know something academically, but you have no power to apply it to your life. You can read your Bible until hell freezes over, but you need a man of God and a woman of God to give you direction or you going down, baby. Clap your hands now. Everybody's the same. No, we're not. Some of us are called by the Lord. Some of us are called, prepared, anointed, and sent. And if God loves you, he will identify for you who your leader is. I didn't say cult leader. I said body of Christ leader. God in his wisdom, God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. He don't need Timothy Clark or Horace Smith, but he has decided in his love and grace to anoint you. He ain't anointing everybody. If you read Ephesians 1, it says according as we have known him, before the world began, before the world started, God decided I'm going to have me some folk. I'm going to put my hand on them. And they're going to be unlike anybody else. And some of y'all haters know he's different. He the same. You know you lying. Why you say that? You know he's not the same because you've seen others like him but don't look like him. Don't operate like him. He's anointed. She's anointed. They got gifts they did not earn. They got wisdom you cannot have. You must come to them to get the wisdom or you're not going to have it because God don't play it like that. Source equivalency has ruined us. Y'all know, due to two or three years under a certain president, there was a guy who was a scientist by the name of Fossey. And you would watch him on, on, on the news. And you would see the president saying, you don't have to worry about this. And the summertime comes, the wind will blow it away. And this guy's, this guy's almost like twitching. like, cause now, 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 he knows he works for the president, but he's thinking... That ain't true. Ah, hallelujah. The, ooh, the, 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 the I, I did a study. I looked at that in the first year of a certain guy's presidency, he lied more than 5,000 times. This ain't political. He lied. Let me help you church folk. I said to Bishop on last night, I'm not real brilliant, but I've discovered this, that a lie, any lie on any level is a manifestation of the Antichrist. I did not say he was the Antichrist. I said any lie is a falsehood. And a falsehood is, des is designed to trick you to believe something that's not true even though you believe that it is because the devil is a liar and the father of lies and Jesus is the truth. Give him a high five now and give God praise. No, no, give him a high five, a real high five. Let me get into this because I don't have much time. Now watch this. What has happened that you need to tie into to make sure that you are covered by good leadership, you must believe the word of God. Let me quote one of my favorite scriptures because my wife said he a little bit crazy. I like the Matrix series. I like Star Trek Second Generation. I've studied Dr. Spock and Data. I know Captain Picard and I know the other guy too. And I watch how they operate and I've concluded they've got some spiritual truth in them. I've watched the Matrix and I wonder what are they saying? They're saying there's a world that most of us think is the world, but that ain't the world. What you're seeing is a facsimile of the world. The, wor the real world is Zion. Zion is underground. Zion is an outpost. Zion is the less va le last vestige of truth and light. And I love to get up on church and quote my friend. Hallelujah, Morpheus. They said, then, and the guy says to Morpheus, Morpheus, you have been spoken in a long time. Tonight, I want you to speak. And he walks out and he says, Zion, hear me. And when he begins to speak, I said to my wife, he's preaching. She said, you crazy. I said, no, 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 no. It's Zion. It's the, it's the remnant of God's people that don't understand.
understand that the real world uh, is their world. I'm going to get to that in a moment because their world is bricks and stones. It's stubble. It ain't cute. But the real world is spectacular because they lied to you. That's not the real world. Here's my scripture. The Bible says about me. That's why I know I'm a part of the matrix. You have been translated. Can I preach a little while? I've been saved 50 years. I know now that when I got saved, I got translated. Yeah. They couldn't beat me up, Scotty, but I got translated. I was still in Chicago and got translated. What happened, Doc? I used to be a part of the kingdom of darkness, but I got translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. I've been living in a different kingdom for some time now, and I wonder why I don't get along with a lot of people, because they are not of the same kingdom as I am. I serve a king that is not dark. He is light. His name is Jehovah to sit canoe and he's mighty to save. Give him praise right now. If you understand theology, when he saved you, you got translated. Whether you know it or not, you no longer reside in that kingdom. Now watch this. Here's the real battle. The real battle is not your boss who you don't like. It's not your auntie who didn't do you right. Or that man who abused you and he really did. I'm not excusing anybody. But that's not your battle. We wrestle not. Say it anyway, Horace. You, you fighting your family. You fighting your pastor. You fighting people. You wasting your time. You are operating in the wrong kingdom. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, highly placed. You fighting demons, generals in high positions, and they represent darkness. You know them by how they operate. They can see evil and preach it because they don't care about you. Here's my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. It's St. John 10 and 10. The thief. And that's all a lie is. A lie is designed to take from you what God planted in you. You just like Esau who sold his birthright for a little piece of meat. Can, can I say for a little hot sex? I said it. Yeah, I said it. For, 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 for some kind of title. Or I want to be a bishop. Or Look, stop selling out for junk stuff that don't even matter. Won't even last. What God has for you is so spectacular. If you knew it, huh, you would not be a sellout. You would tell them that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. You have no idea what God has prepared for them that love him. I know about it because I was taught by my pastor. Walk by faith boy and not by sight when you walk in the knowledge of God there must be a man or woman in your life that God has given you to cover you God has called you to cover thousands and thousands they can talk about you all they want to but their future is in your hands in part because God has imparted God has imparted it. Don't be mad at them. Don't be mad at the Clarks. Be mad at God. He says some 30, some 60, some 100. He gave one five, one two, and one one. We all the same. That's a lie too. That's a, that's a humanity lie that's designed to make you feel good, but it is a deception. We are not all the same. Don't have to be all the same. What God has for you will fit you. What God has for you is for nobody else. What God has for you will bless you. I know what I'm talking about. Give God a praise right now. He will bless you. The issue is what God intended. If I had some more time, I'd tell you that when you read Ephesians 1, it was Bishop Brazier's favorite passage because it is deep. 
in the theology of the church who who has chose who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world he has adopted us as I'm an adopted child. I'm so glad about it. Anybody here adopt a child? Raise your hand. You ad- th- give God praise for them. Because anybody can get pregnant. But to adopt somebody, you must be deliberate. Tell God, thank you that I'm an adopted child. God was deliberate when he saves you, baby. God made a choice he did not have to make. And you are the beneficiary. You ought to give God some praise. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. The issue again is that in Ephesians, he talks about what God did there. And then it says something like this. Since I heard that you have faith in God, since I heard that you have a love for the saints, I cease not to pray for you that God, the father of glory, will grant unto you a spirit of wisdom and knowledge, revelation in the knowledge of him. Watch this, because God knows this from the apostle Paul, learned it. If God opens up for you access to knowledge, the greatest demon may not like you, but he will respect you. He has no choice. Greater is he that's in you uh, than he that's in the world. Uh, he, you can't be bought. You can't be managed. You won't shut up. You will not scratch and shuffle. You will declare boldly, thus saith the Lord, God is on my side. I will not fear what men may say to me. I know in whom I have believed. The pastor, the leader, the shepherd. And and again, I chose Jeremiah for a reason. I I spent a couple days looking at Jeremiah. And we call him the weeping prophet because, you know, he was always sad. He's also because they beat him up. You know, no, you read Jeremiah. Read, read from chapter 1 all the way through. You will find out that they had prophets and pastors in the land beside Jeremiah. And when Nebuchadnezzar took them captive, those prophets said to those people, don't worry, we're about to come out. We're going to be out of here quickly. And then Jeremiah said, wait a minute, that's a lie. We are not coming out quickly. A real prophet will tell you the real will of God. They won't lie to you. Yea, thus saith the Lord, if you give $25 in this offering, when you get home, your bank account will be full with $2,000. He lying to you. That's a lie. And don't tell me what God can do. Don't you believe God can do it? It ain't got nothing to do with what God can do. God can do anything, but your mouth don't make God do anything either. Because you want it don't mean God's going to do it. Faith begins with what God says, not with what you want. So the issue there is that the power of God is unleashed. So Jeremiah, he says something like this, woe unto those prophets and leaders that deceive the people and tell them we're coming out. He, He said to them, look, God talked to me. He said, get in this country and dig you some wells, build you some houses, let your sons get married, marry off your daughters. We're going to be here a while. We're going to be here for 70 years. But then he says, but after 70 years, God says these words, I know the thoughts I think toward you, thoughts of shalom and not of evil to bless your future. God has a schedule Stay with God. I got to get done here. Watch this. When I thought about COVID, I realized it wasn't the only pandemic. Think about this. Give me some soft music. I ain't going too much further. Watch what happened in COVID. With COVID, it seemed like other epidemics, they didn't start. They were revealed. I mean, I'm 70-something years old. I, I saw policemen choke out black men before. I know, you know it did. They lynched him. Why was it when George Floyd got offed? See, the whole world went into a rampage. They told me that in Ireland, they had marches against police. Ain't no black folk in Ireland, man. Around the world. Because I believe that God chose pandemics 
to stimulate the church to tell you it's going to be a new thing done and you better get with me because you're supposed to lead the folk in what I'm about to do. Pandemics, economic pandemic. You won't deal with that. Health pandemics. I've been, look, I've been attending since 1980. I've seen the disparities among black people. I've seen it, and it's not just me. The stats will tell you there is an inherent discrimination against minorities. It's not always deliberate, but it still happens. Look, whether they meant it or not, you still die. Okay, hallelujah. Intention ain't enough when death is in the picture. He, here again, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come <laughs> that you, my wonderful brothers and sisters, born again, but I have come that you might have life. Zoe, life, not just life. Life in all of its God-given intentions. I got to go forward quickly. When God made you, he had intention in mind. When God made man, he had intention in mind. Adam blew it, but Jesus set us free. The rescue plan of Christ on Calvary was to restore the glory. The glory must be restored. And even though I'm glad I'm saved, I'm glad I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, there's more to God than the Holy Spirit. You are to be the head and not the tail. You are to be the lender and not the borrower. You are to be above and not beneath. Don't let the devil lie to you and take your inheritance. Too many of us neglect our health. The body don't matter. Can you preach without a body? His heart had not gotten better. He could not preach. Stop demeaning your physicality when in some way you are made in the Imago Dei. You are made in the image of God. He never intended for death to be a part of your life. But Christ came and gave you a new life that you never had. Give God praise right now. I want to come back and preach. Revelation in the chaos revelation in the chaos if you're honest the last few years have been chaotic don't miss God in the chaos never waste a chaotic moment in your life because if you're a child of God what the devil may have meant for evil Neo, what the devil intended for evil, God will bring it to good if you walk in faith. I want to preach about darkness and light. Einstein's theory of relativity is based on the issue of light. You know how fast light travels? 186,000 miles. No, no, no. Per second. It is, it is not conceivable that some can travel that fast. But why are you surprised? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But the earth was void, chaotic, dark, and without form. Tubu and Tuya in the, in the, in, 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 in the Hebrew, it was, it was dark and it was chaotic. Huh. But the Bible says, but the spirit of the Lord God hovered, hovered above the chaos. And out of the chaos came the voice of God. And God said, let there be light. You missed it. Darkness everywhere, chaos everywhere. But the voice of God says, let there be light. Light. Give God praise for light. The darkness always precedes the light. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Not the morning and the evening. No, no, no. Get it right. The evening and the morning. 
Because God allows darkness to show you how bad it is without him. But the minute you open up to light, I feel the Holy Ghost. My time is way up. I got to stop. Okay, okay. That's Genesis 1. Go, go, go to the corollary in John. In the beginning was the word or the thought, or the will of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were with him in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him, without anything made that was made. Watch this. In him was life. But don't stop there. In him was life. But the life was the light. You discount knowledge not knowing that true life brings light. Not light in color, light in illumination. I was, I was going to dazzle y'all by telling you, you know, I, 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 I came here yesterday and, and they, I told them not to pick me up too soon from my house because I knew how long it took me to get to the airport and I knew that I had clear pre-TSA. Some of y'all know, what is that? Clear is a biometric scanner that can detect your eyes. I took the test months ago to be cleared for clear because now these scanners can look at your eyes and say, let him go past. You missed it. If I had time, I'd tell you that, that, the, that, that, that your eye is more precise than your fingerprint. There are 35 identifiable characteristics of your fingerprint that are unlike anybody else's, but there are 266 characters of your lens that is different than any other part of your body. They are assured that I was Horace Smith for real because they were able to see into my eyes. Eyes only work in the light. In my church, when I preached something like this, I had to turn off all the lights. Ah, ah, scared, aren't you? Turn the light back on. Turn the light back on. Because the light is everything. It, it, I can tell you how it triggers every part of your eye in the optic nerve and the cornea and the iris and the pupil all the way down to your retina and the and, and the cones and the rods and it sends a signal to your forebrain and your brain interprets the light and gives you an image. You're looking at, looking at me right now, right? Your eye keeps looking at me, keeps going. I know him, that's Dr. Smith. How you know me? Ain't seen me for years. Because your eye gave your brain a message that is stored in your neurons and when you saw me in a millisecond, you knew who I was. Oh, yeah. And we poo-poo light when we need more light. What has hurt our country and our people, even black folk, we have ignored the light. But in him was life, and the life was the light of men. How do you know? Because the light shined in the darkness. And the darkness did not catalambano it. Lambano means take it. Kata is a prefix that means take it like you own it. You missed it. So when God gives you something and the devil has it, go take it. And don't ask him. Take it like you own it. Kata Lambano. The darkness cannot comprehend the light. I will tell you about the dark holes in the universe that we have never seen, but we know that light has a problem escaping the dark hole. But when God steps in, the light emits from the dark hole, and you see everything as it is. Stop, Horace. All right. It is the light of God that makes you more than your enemy. It is the light. It is the illumination. It is the understanding. It is the knowledge. I was born in Chicago, in the ghetto. They see me now and say, that's Dr. Smith. You didn't see me then in the federal projects. You didn't see me then eating the puff rice from the government and the government cheese. You didn't see me then. You didn't see me. You didn't see me. But God saw me. <laughs> oh, God, stop hard. 
man. They, they say, they, at the hospital, they say he is a doctor, but we know he's there before he, he, we see him. He's singing. I don't know I'm singing. I ain't putting on no show for nobody. That's a song in my soul that the angels can't sing. I can't help myself. I know when he found me. I know he brought me from. I know what he's doing right now in my life. Stop hating. You can be smart and be saved. You can be brilliant and be saved. In fact, real knowledge is to acknowledge that God is the author of everything. Stand with me, everybody. I'm